Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. We're your guides through sordid tales of movies, music, and pop culture. Our show is best experienced under the influence of cannabis, so now's your cue to light up. Now remember, drugs are dangerous. Please use responsibly, but do subscribe. And now your hosts, James Thomas and David Hawk. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday night, and welcome to the Mile High Podcast. Tonight is our first ever Mile High Podcast stand-up special. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, this is something that we have been talking about since we very first started, uh, just having some uh, real funny people coming on and starting off the show for us. Um, so we're going to have some wonderful comedians on tonight. Uh, and then after the stand-up sets, we're going to go straight into our conversation about the most uh, influential comedians of all time. But let's get on with the show. Our first comedian needs very little introduction, mostly because he is everywhere on Truckee Pacific. He's the host of Santori What Now? Uh, or Now What? Depending on who you ask. He's been on comedy stages from Orlando to Minnesota and has recently been banned forever coming back to Colorado. Mike Santori, take it away. My girlfriend called me an alcoholic. I told her that was a fair assessment of me. I really do love my girlfriend. But her husband is a cock blocker. The sport of bowling is racist. White pins with rednecks. I never took any drugs in my whole entire life. That I didn't like. Every time I see a U-Haul truck and I'm with a friend, I would always say, U-Haul, I push. I hate talking to people. That's why I bark at them instead. Just imagine if you ask someone a question and their response was, <laughs> Do you know what they say about bald head men with glasses and play guitar? I was just asking. So, wonderful job, Mr. Santori. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our next comedian, it comes all the way to us from Alton, Illinois, which I had to find on Google Maps, and it is actually closer to uh, St. Louis than Chicago. So, who the fuck knew? I thought she was from Chicago, but she's from Alton, Illinois, close to St. Louis. This self-proclaimed shit poster and lover of kittens will be in Denver on May 14th and 15th because unlike Santori, she is not banned from calling, coming to Colorado. Uh, and she will also be part of the hip hop comedy throwdown at the Spot Sports Bar in St. Louis on May 20th. Welcome to the Mahai Podcast, Nicole Gorey. Nicole, go ahead and take it away. Hey everybody. So 2020 was a rough year. Um, we had to learn a lot of things, and uh, I started out the year single. 
And I don't know about you, but dating in the middle of a fucking pandemic, not easy. There had to be rules, you know? He had to work from home and his grandparents already had to be dead. Those are the rules. Imagine going to suck a dick and killing a Mima. Like, he's ghosting you and so is his grandma. It's not good. It's not a good look. Something didn't change though, which I appreciated. He still had those fun little phone calls. You know the ones I'm talking about, right? Hey baby, you should go get tested. Only this time it's not for chlamydia. If two big pills and a reasonable copay can clear up COVID, I think we'd all be a little safer right now. You know? I don't, I don't like basketball. I don't. Um, but I have, I fucked a lot of basketball fans. And sometimes you need something to talk about in between all of the blowjobs. You know what I'm saying? So when Kobe died, that, that hit hard, you know? And I wanted to read everything I could about him. And did you know that Kobe Bryant was named after Kobe Beef? Yep. And if you don't know what Kobe Beef is, that's that really bougie, they're the bougie cows, you know, they get craft beer, massages. I think they even got the PS5 for Christmas. Like these cows are living their best life ever. So like, I just can't, can you imagine putting something in your mouth and loving it so much that you name your spawn after it? My only regret in life is not naming one of my kids ass. <laughs> Preferably the ones that dad, whose dad doesn't pay child support. <laughs> Yeah, fuck that dude. <laughs> um, so I do, I have, I'm a single mom and I have a 13 year old son, uh, teenage years. They're gearing up to be so much fun, but he, he's a little too comfortable with telling me like his opinion on stuff. Like he thinks it's okay to like comment and like how much cleavage I'm showing. Like, and I read every one of those stupid what to expect when you're expecting books, but they did not cover what to do when your 13 year old slut shames you. I'm gonna need them to put that in there right right now. Um, but you know, he's he's 13 and I have to, you know, do the talk with him. So he'd been spending a lot of time in the bathroom, you know. And I'm just like, okay, let's sit down and talk about this. You know, he had his laptop in there, he had candles, and I was like, it's natural. It's completely natural. And he's like, Mom, what are you what are you talking about? What you're doing in the bathroom like that's cool if you need to talk about it i'm here I'm like, mom like what do you think i'm doing in the bathroom I'm like, if you're touch he was he freaked out he was like mom that's just my me time i was like yeah i know that's what i'm talking about <laughs> safe to say he was just watching anime not hentai and having you know a little bubble bath so we discovered that my son is going to be a virgin forever, which is fine by me, you know. Um, so I have the worst dating record. Um, I love a project. If a guy has issues, especially drug issues, I'm just like, all I hear is save me, love me, just, just help me. So I dated a crackhead in 2019. But I justified it though, because he made his own crack. You know, it was organic, free range, and gluten free. The whole foods crack, if you will. He cared about what went in his body. I did not. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm dating this great guy now though. Um, he's 10 years younger than me though, so I get to like teach him stuff in the bedroom. You know what I'm talking about, right? He recently had the opportunity to hit his first woman with consent. And you give a 23 year old white male that kind of power. I have daddy issues. So he's smacking me and smacking me. And I'm just like, hit me, daddy, hit me, daddy. Bam, bam, bam. Finally, I felt something pop in my jaw and I had to tell him, I said, smack me, daddy, not hit me like I was a police officer's wife. <laughs> but that's going well going very well and so far his grandparents are still alive that's all i got guys <laughs> that was awesome thank you so much nicole <laughs> so uh we're like missing half of our crew uh jeff is still having uh, some issues trying to get on 
So the man of mystery who uh, we him just might be a mystery for the rest of the night. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and who the fuck knows where James is. So it looks like it's just going to be the three of us for right now. Um, mm-hmm. So thank you guys so much. When Jeff ever uh, comes on, if he can, we'll uh, throw his set right in the middle there. So that was great stuff, guys. So uh, appreciate it. You guys coming on and uh, some great sets there. Um, tonight we're talking about some of the uh, – most influential comedians and i i can't really talk about because i'm not a comedian but i thought you know why not talk about influential comedians with some actual comedians here so uh first of all what i want to do is just uh because we have a lot of new viewers tonight i want you guys to talk a little bit about yourself so nicole since you are brand brand new to the mile high podcast uh first of all welcome thank you so much for like seeing some weird dude pop up in your dms they're like yes i'm totally going to answer that that dm (laughs) And then like saying, yeah, it's probably I'll fucking get stoned and talk about comedy. So thank you so much for coming on. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, I'm a, like I said, a single mom to two amazing kids. Um, I am currently going through a midlife crisis. <laughs> so I'm unemployed, which goes right on with the comedy thing. Um, I kind of lived over the Illinois Midwest area. Um, originally from Chicago, but fell in love with St. Louis. Um, I started doing comedy originally because I'm terrified of public speaking. It scares the shit out of me. And I like shit posting on Facebook and people are like, maybe you should do it. I was like, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and I fell in love with it. So yeah, here I am. Awesome. Getting high with y'all. <laughs> well, you put something up on, uh, Shit, I don't even see my camera. I, you guys probably wonder who's talking to you. Uh, there I am. Hi, me. Um, so uh, you put something up on your Facebook today because I've been stalking you since uh, we first met you um, about uh, you had a, a really interesting past. And I thought uh, that'd be cool to share with our listeners. So uh, tell us where you came from, man. Yeah. Um, so I am a certified orphan. <laughs> um, my mom passed away when I was three. My dad when I was eight. And I grew up in a mix of foster care and boarding schools. Um, if anyone has ever heard of the Moose Lodge, it's in Moose Heart, Illinois. In, uh, in El- yeah, obviously Illinois. <laughs> and um, yeah, just, I got tossed around a lot. Um, when, I, when I was 18, I got a job the system, obviously. Um, I was homeless for a while. I actually, so it, my thing is I love talking about crack. It's, <laughs> I was actually a crackhead. Um, I got addicted to it. Um, And then I got clean and had got pregnant with my son. Went to nursing school, stayed in shelters. Um, Yeah, so like I am very big fan of talking about. uh, That's why one of the reasons why I started doing comedy. I I had to laugh about everything that's happened to me. I can make a joke about almost anything. Like I have a joke about being an orphan and like, you know, searching for my daddy Warbucks while like dealing with my daddy issues. <laughs> like I, I just, comedy helps me heal. And I think that's true for most people. And um, yeah, I, I've been a, a lot of places, done a lot of stupid shit. Um, yeah. Well, welcome. And uh, uh, you know, you have a, a great story, and we love to hear those kind of stories here on Mile High Podcast. Everybody has like really cool fucking backgrounds and histories and shit, um, and we've all done dumb shit. So it's a big community of people who've done dumb shit. Uh, speaking of doing dumb shit, Mike Santori, who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Um, well, for those that don't know me, I'm Mike Santori. Um, I'm um, uh, trying to be a stand-up comedian. Or I am a stand-up comedian. I uh, do a podcast on Wednesday nights for Chuck Pacific called What Now with Santori. Um, I'm currently unemployed due to the whole pandemic that we're going through. And then, like she said, it helps you out work on your material and stuff. So that, you know, that's good. I have this, you know, moment of uh, creating my uh, craft. So um, I also am a former alcoholic. I, I've been sober for a year and half now and yes congratulations to you too that's great nicole um but yeah uh, i used to do a lot of dumb shit um <laughs> and I, sometimes i don't do as much dumb shit as i used to just because of the fact that i'm sober and i have to like 
rethink my consequences. <laughs> so before when I was drunk, there wasn't, you know, no thinking, you just went and then there was your consequences. So now that you have a sober brain, you actually think about doing dumb stuff. So I keep my dumb stuff to a minimum nowadays. But other than that, that's pretty much me. <laughs> Not much to say. And I'm still still learning, learning the game of life. How old are you again? 48. In June, this month. Or next you month. haven't learned about 48, man. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I've met some older people that still haven't figured it out. So, you know, we're all, we're all cool. cool I'm I'm I don't have my <laughs> No, no. I never will. Never will. Yeah. No, just going to still keep walking confused and take care of what you need to do and, you know, be good to yourself and be good to others. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. <laughs> but sometimes that's really hard to do, especially nowadays. And that's unfortunate. So, we're not in comedy. Let's, let's make everyone laugh. <laughs> if you're not laughing, you're crying, right? All right. One or the other. I'd rather be laughing. Absolutely. So one of the things that we love to do here on the Mahai Podcast is uh, we are a pop culture podcast, and we like to give love to our local weed suppliers. Um, in particular, I, uh, tonight I'm smoking a little bit of the wedding cake from our friend Courtney from Lova, Lova Co., uh, off of you don't none of these streets mean any fucking thing to you nicole or santori but they mean something to the three people from colorado who are watching tonight uh no, i'm but, taking notes i'm gonna be there soon i'm taking notes oh <laughs> uh, yeah okay well yeah when you get here man just just you know you have my my information so i will hook you up with the best weed spots because you know that's kind of what we do it's like we have a whole podcast you know directed around local weed so uh tonight smoking the wedding cake from lova our friend corny who is our local cannabis expert she runs a lot of these dispensaries uh in colorado so uh making sure that we support some of these small independent dispensaries uh what is the weed situation up in illinois nicole like i i know santori he is uh smoking legal weed which is weird for a liberal state like that right but uh he's smoking cloak <laughs> cigarettes from minnesota but what is the weed situation in in Illinois. And aren't you doing something with edibles or something? I am. Um, okay, so the weed situation, I, I hate to say this, um, I still get mine from my weed man. Um, it, it, it's quality shit, but like, I can't afford to spend three prices right now. I do like the edibles, though, that they have um, around. And I do, I love, I discovered how, honestly, I wasn't much of a smoker. I, over until actually the last year. I also love booze way too much and end up crashing my car and having to get sober in the end of 2019, my crackhead era. So um, I started smoking to kind of deal with the withdrawals and um, yeah, it just made me feel 10 times better and helped with my depression. And, um, but the weed here, the laws are, it's so new cause it just was legalized. So there's, we're still navigating them it's gonna be a process like just like it's been a process in Colorado you know started out slow and but one thing that we are very lucky about is Colorado like set the set the tone for kind of the rest of the world like Colorado is the first state to go full recreational and us and uh, Oregon I believe it was and we fucking we rocked it so a lot of these weed laws and stuff that are being enacted throughout the country are based off of Colorado laws and um, it was a lot of trial and error, but I mean, Colorado's pretty much done it right. Um, and it's really cool to see that so much, uh, pot proliferation is going through the country. Like, it's one of those things that like, who knew that we was the thing that was like the great, uh, you know, bringer of people together. Uh, this country's so divided, except for when it comes to weed, weed is like oddly bipartisan and people fucking love it. So people, Alabama is in like letting people starting to bring in weed and then fucking liberal ass Washington. Like, so this is one of the cool things about, uh, weed is it, it really does bring people together. So tonight, uh, so, well, first of all, you didn't give love to the, your weed. So what kind of weed are you smoking? Is it, uh, bag of indeterminate weed or what is it oh no i i know the strains. it's a peach pie peach pie yes it's delicious nice do you prefer a sativa or an indica i'm actually a hybrid girl i like a little bit of both nice gotta have that mellow gotta have that creative high what about you santori what are you doing up there in minnesota um minnesota finest you know got from you know uh 
Samson. Samson hooked me up. He always does. You know, got to give a shout, Samson. Yeah. yeah, I don't do that, you know, Mr. Nice Guy stuff. It's always Samson. I go to Samson because he was the original gangster. So, yeah, I keep real with the Minnesota, you know, Samson. Minnesota's so, I have no idea what I'm smoking. I just know I'm smoking something. It gets me how I'm happy. But if you really want your tentacle I prefer, I do like Indica. I like, you know, I like Indica. It's more of a, I mean, I, I don't really get, you know, people like, get really super tired and I just can't I mean I get to a state of like I'm just good I mean there's been points where I couldn't get off the couch but that was just my choice mm. it seemed to be a, at seemed to be to be a better place at the time than anything else seemed to be so but I have to tell you I'm a, I'm a sativa guy because I do a lot of writing and I do this podcasting thing and it helps me be funny because when I'm not, I am so antisocial. Like I can't, I don't, I'm not very creative. I'm very quiet. I'm like, I don't want to really do anything. So I, if I do it into cause all I do is like fucking sit on my couch and watch shit on TV and snack a lot. And for me, I don't need to snack any more than I already do. So no into cause for me, it gives me, you know, I don't want to be sleepy. I want to like, you know, do be creative. And that's more. Fun. Um, do you, you want to see one of my cookies? I want to see your cookies. Okay, I'm gonna show you. Also, I just have to know, like, have you ever met an edible hookup with that kind of advertising? <laughs> That's because excellent. Such a mom thing. Man, you could totally fucking just like go to the local bake sale and just like put a bunch of those cookies out there and like all the cool moms. You're like, come over here, come on. I got some special cookies for you over here. I'm actually gonna be vending them at a fish. I don't know if you listen to fish. I don't, but my friend, I love her to death, and she does, and she's having a whole festival. Interesting. Hey, you don't even need to like- listen to fish. You know that they're gonna enjoy. Oh, look at this. Oh, oh wow, that's this amazing. Has, I infused the dough, and it has infused. Uh, what is it? Um, chocolate covered coffee beans from um, Kansas City, Missouri at this local roastery and infused caramel. So, that's lots a, of infusion awesome. going on. That looks really good. <laughs> you, you enjoy that. Cookie. And they're delicious. Uh, well, feel free to eat those cookies. We'll live vicariously through you. So just like <laughs> shove them in your mouth and we'll just, we'll enjoy from afar. Uh, yeah, I've totally lost my train of thought. Your cookies were so amazing that I just right. totally got knocked off my train of thought here. All right, so we're here, we're here talking influential comedians. And, you know, you guys obviously are in the comedy game because somebody inspired you to be in it. Um, so that's kind of what we're rapping about tonight. Maybe James will be on. Maybe he won't. I don't know. It might, it'll be like one of those exciting like cliffhangers at the end. Like, will he be on? Oh, James is coming on. Holy shit. So uh, my first question, I'm going to go to you, Nicole. Uh, So who are the comics or comedians that inspired you to be a comic? Like, why are you a comedian? I actually, so even though it might not sometimes get you booked and it's, but I love blue comedy. I love raunchy comedy, um, but cleverly done, like, you know, kind of comedy. And I love when people are authentic and honest. So um, like Lenny Bruce is one of my favorites. Um, just because of that time, like, like he, yeah, like, if you haven't seen the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel either, like, the guy who plays Lenny Bruce in that does it, like, so well, it's ridiculous how he just, his mannerisms and everything he did so well with, um, Sam Kinison, um, just love the fuck out of that dude, (laughs) and I'm sad still, (laughs) like, um, yeah, so, and female comics, like, obviously, Sarah Silverman, Wanda Sykes, um, and also, like, uh, not stand-up, but I love, Amanda Bynes was actually going, I, this is something that a lot of people don't know, Amanda Bynes was, like, gonna be, like, at a Lucille Ball level if she didn't get fucked up on drugs and alcohol, I swear to God. <laughs> like, that physical comedy and the ability to make people laugh with her body and things like that she did in her movies. Wasn't Lucille Ball fucked up on drugs and alcohol herself, so... I think they'd be like more playing the part. Worked like she was uh, functioning though. Like went on to like do things like Amanda Vines just like hit that point and then she was like, yeah, which sucks because like she's I I think she was a super talented actress and made people laugh and she had that same quality about her. One thing that uh, I didn't realize until was more mature in my years was 
how much of comedy is driven by drugs and alcohol? You look back at all these great comedians, man, and they are fueled by drugs and alcohol. But when you're watching them when you're younger, they're just like, man, these guys are just funny. But okay. how many of those, those uh, comedy routines are sponsored by cocaine? <laughs> That's comedy routine. Way too many. I don't buy Hennessy alcohol. On cocaine. <laughs> Some of the fastest sets I've ever seen. Sponsored by cocaine. How about you, Santori? Who are your fucking comedic influences? Um, Sam Kennison. I mean, I'm glad she brought him up. I, 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 you know, he he is so underrated and sad. He was he was really funny. And he died way too soon. We lost him way too soon, man. You know that sucked, man. Just. But he he was he's very funny. But yeah, um, Carlin, Pryor, Murphy, early Murphy, um, Bill Hicks is underrated. I think Bill Hicks was an amazing comedian himself before he passed away too. He he went too he went too soon as you know Farley and all that. But um, for me, it's always been you know Pryor and Carlin, the two main guys. I mean, I was growing up in the '80s as a child, and you know sneaking in there on my dad's you know, uh, office and, you know, watching, you know, cable or uh, live stuff in his office and, you know, watching Pryor on such a strip. That was great. Um, Eddie Murphy, Delirious, a lot of people say raw, but Delirious was the first, you know, tape. I have a cassette tape of Eddie Murphy live and I would hear that over the summertime. And it's just that whole, his whole routine was just funny. I mean, like Aunt Bunny. Like Goonie Goo Goo. I mean, that stuff was great. But yeah, pretty much like Carlin Murphy, Bill Hicks, Pryor. Um, my mom got me involved uh, with a Red Skeleton. He's underrated, but he was really, really funny. And he had, you know, a bad background. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, one of those people like Nicole, you know, like, you know, you can always make your life better. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, you can always make that path better. You know, there are two roads you can go on. We can change the path to the road that you're on, you know. So that's good to see. But yeah, Red Skeleton, people don't know about him. Look him up. He was a very, very funny man. Um, but yeah, Carlin mainly. Um, just whatever. Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman was a genius. Um, we lost him too soon, too. Um, it just sucks. Like, majority of the most funny people that, you know, you see, they, they're gone now. And, and uh, you know, and and it's really sad what happened to Bill Cosby. I mean, that sucks because you know, once again, he was an influence in my life. You know, Bill Cosby himself. That that whole stand up was funny, but it just sucks. His, you know, his outcome. But yeah, Carlin. I'm going to go with Carlin overall. So, yeah. So Nicole, who turned you on to comedy? Like, because you definitely didn't have like that. That you know, family. I, I'm trying to be like trying to beat around the bush here. Because you grew up in the orphanage, you know, so like who turns you on to comedy? I mean, like a particular comic or yeah, like, like how Because I... like my parents, they were like, they were, they were getting me in front of George Carlin when I was a kid. And I've always loved comedians and Santori, uh, his mom got him into comedy, like watching comedians, but you can have, you're traveling a different path. So I'm sure there's somebody who's like, hey, this, you know, this is stand up comedy. This is funny. You should check this out. And you're like... You know, was there somebody who was that kind of influence in your life? Honestly, probably my ex, actually. Like, the we. Kid? No, sorry. Oh, no. different ex. <laughs> okay. And ex. Uh, we're still actually best friends. We were engaged. I'm going to be the best man in his wedding that's coming up, actually. I mean, I decided I'm going to be the best man mainly because I didn't plan the bachelor party, and that's cool. <laughs> I like to plan the shit. Um, but yeah, like he, we uh, had some DVDs of, um, actually Sam Kinison, and he's the one that I got, like, I was like, oh, wow, like this shit is really good. <laughs> and he also like, he already said that, like, he's like, I, he's like, I think you're funny. I think you can do this. And he was one of the people like we had since broken up, but we stayed roommates in that weird, you know, little situation. <laughs> so like, but he was one of the people that was like, Hey, you can do this. And he came to me with my first my first open mic. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, welcome to the show, James. Your hair looks luxurious. Oh, Dave. Yeah, you know me. I got a haircut. No, I, it's just cold. <laughs> I, it's just cold. I, I rinsed it off before I came out here because it was in my crazy afro uh, looking going forward. So. James, this is Nicole. Nicole James. Hi, Nicole. Thank Hi, you James. for coming on our show. 
I, I we literally do a show from my house and I'm late to that. So who, <laughs> how, who the hell knows how that works out? Um, I like your guys' comedians list. I did want to jump in on it. I am not a stand-up comedian, but I've played one on a boat before. Um, <laughs> I I would say that I, comic influences. Um, Andy Kaufman is huge. I his style. I really love kind of that gonzo comedy, like that somebody who's willing to push an envelope, and it doesn't have to be offensive. Andy Kaufman didn't necessarily need to be offensive. He just took things that didn't seem funny on paper and showed them out to be funny. Um, I would say that Mel Brooks is not a stand-up comedian, but by God is one of the funniest people out there. I think Dave Chappelle mm -hmm. is the funniest working comedian. The, uh, you know, Kevin Hart is fine, but nothing goes on Dave Chappelle. And Killing Me Softly from DC is the single funniest stand-up show that I've ever seen in my entire life. To this day, it's one of the few stand-ups that I can watch repeatedly. And the only other person I would say that uh, is uh, Don Rickles. Don I think there's this, I, I think Don Rickles, uh, if you look at his appearance on the old Tonight Show, he was, he did this thing one time as like, have you ever addressed in front of a dog? I mean, he is just brilliant. So I, I, I was listening to you guys talk and I was like, oh, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. I didn't want to jump in, but yeah, no, like comedic influences. Those would be the ones that like, that created my narration of how I see and how I view comedy. I mean, I, I used to do a uh, online cartoon and the non sequiturs, everybody's gonna look at it and they're gonna be like, oh, that's family guy, but it's not family guy. It's uh, Mel Brooks. It, uh, Mel Brooks taught me comedy better than anyone else. Um, so yeah, that's just where I'm at. Dave, yeah. you're doing so good hosting. I know I have the list. But I'm going to let you host. I'm just going to answer questions. I'm yeah. just going to be... <laughs> you were purposely late, speaking. so you didn't have to host, didn't you? That, that was my whole plan. And plus, you know, I, I needed my hair looking good because... I don't know. I can't think the last though. couple times been a little much. So I went for 90s uh, Hanson with short hair. I don't know, man. You kind of look like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so Don Rickles is amazing. And the fact that, like it was all improvised. Like he didn't write anything yeah. down. He just would get up and just start riffing. Like if I was, the reason I got into Don Rickles was because of the Ronald Reagan inauguration, inaugural ball. And he just got out there and just started ripping on everybody in the room. And it was just like so fast. And like, all that was just off the top of his head. Uh, but my parents were super into comedy when I was growing up. So I watched a lot of, a lot of George Carlin specials and a lot of, uh, my parents like had me watch Eddie Murphy raw when I was like 10. So <laughs> that's pretty much. And so Nicole, my parents, yeah, super cool, cool, super fucking liberal. Uh, they love everything that we do, but like they bought me NWA as my first rap CD when I was like 11, 12 years old. They like, you know, here's Eddie Murphy raw at 10 years old. My mom introduced me to Stephen King at nine years old. So I grew up very fast in that. House. Honestly, I think me and your mom get along. Cause that's kind oh. of like my son. Um, I took him uh, to a uh, punk show for Bernie when he was, what, nine? <laughs> and he would ask them, they're like, do you know who Easy e is? And he's that rapping voice from the hood. That's funny. <laughs> and like, I was just like, I'm sorry. They were like, oh, we love him. And they gave him a vegan cupcake. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I try to do the same thing with my kid, like, I'm introducing to all sorts of different uh, uh, bands now. So he's wearing like, he's 13 years old. He's wearing his first Slipknot shirt. He's like, I don't even know who the band is. Like, kid, let me tell you who Slipknot is. Here, let's pop this in. Um, by the way, my mom has just invited you into our family. So you are officially part of my family. So we're like, you know, oh, yeah. yeah, you're like cousin plus. Took or like, maybe you're like my years, sister. But I found a mom. There are a lot of Hawkins families on the Truckee Pacific shows, you will soon find out. Both uh, not you both welcomed in and both just related to Dave. Sometimes the My Life podcast is just a Hawkins family reunion. <laughs> and like we and we like stick one other person in there. So it's like 
seven people from Dave's family and like Melody or me or the, we just yeah it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> That's why you know my I have a talented family, so I'll just bring them on. And uh, well, uh, I'm it's my company too, so it's like whatever, bring them on. I know I said I was going to let you host, but now I'm going to take over on a couple of things. I want to ask some questions. Craft comedians, I have to know a few things from all of you guys. So I'm just going to go in around and you tell me your initial quick thought of them. Um, let's go with, because Cat Williams, what do you guys think of Cat Williams? Do you guys like Cat Williams? I'm going to start the way I see it. Dave, you go first. Not really. I think he's kind of annoying. Nicole. Overrated. Okay. Santori. Overrated. Uh, and absolutely the exact thing I feel about Cat Williams. Thank you. I, I, I everybody's like, oh, he's so funny. I'm like, is he though? Is he really that funny? Um, Garfunkel and Oates. What do you think of them? Well, I haven't really watched any of their stuff. So, Nicole, you know anything about them? No. Not very and Dory. Well. All right, there, there. It's the girl who is the voice for Webby. Uh, I wish I remember both their names, but they used to be a comedy duo. Um, what about Kevin Hart? I like him. He's okay. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty funny. He's funny. Who's the best working comedian today in your book? John Mulaney. What do you two think of John Mulaney? I have a very, I have a very interesting opinion about John Mulaney. So Nicole, you go, you go first. What do you think of John Mulaney? I like John Mulaney. I think he's really funny. I don't know about the best working comedian right now. Well, who do you I think? Like... Who do you think is? I, I can't even make up my mind. Like that's too many choices. <laughs> That I don't know. Yeah. That is definitely fair. Santori, what do you think of John Mulaney? I don't know who he is. All right. There, that answers a lot of it. Um, and who's the best <laughs> working comedian at this moment? For my opinion? Or like, yeah, your opinion. Like, at, at this moment, like right now, today? Like, not, they don't have to be telling jokes right now, but like, yes, they're, they're an active comedian. Uh. Well, I'm going to have to say the most active comedian I know working right now that's really funny is Preacher Lawson. There you go. Preacher Lawson. Very cool. That's I don't find John Mulaney kind of funny. Answer. That's very out there. Uh, he, I don't find John Mulaney funny. He's kidding. You don't find John Mulaney funny? Are you serious, man? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. Oh I find... Here's what I, you know, what I say about John Mulaney. I think John Mulaney's... Get, I think he, John Mulaney in a five minute set, a five to seven minute set is on point. I can handle John Mulaney for a five to seven minute set. But an hour special when he hosts Saturday Night Live, the John Mulaney of the whole thing gets a little wearing on me after a while, is how I would say. You know, have like, you seen his actual stand up show? I have. All right. I okay. don't think it makes it better. <laughs> I think, it, listen, there are people I appreciate, and I appreciate there's sometimes that uh, he makes me laugh a lot. I like Bill Maher. I don't like his stand-up generally, but I've been watching him for 20 years. So it, it's one of those things that somebody was like, I got you tickets to Bill Maher's stand-up show. And I'm like, oh, yay. I mean, and I am and I have to tell you guys, and Santori knows this because I used to take him to the comedy club all the time. I am the worst audience member at a stand-up club. Oh, we don't have, like you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy who will you look at and you're like, why isn't that guy laughing? Why isn't he, you know, why isn't he doing anything? And it's it's because I write comedy and I have comedy incorporated so much of my time. Me not laughing does not mean I don't think it's funny, but there are times where I go in my head, I'm like, oh, that was very funny. You know, I'm the most annoying person in the audience for a comedy show. If you get me to laugh out loud and like really just crack up you have you've done something amazing and i, and I feel really bad and I, i'm self-conscious about it over the years i'm like that's why i don't even like going to comedy shows because people are like are you just trying not to laugh and i'm like no but i appreciate comedy so to me it's like art it's like watching it is art and if it's funny it doesn't actually have to come to me through an audible laugh sometimes i can go oh shit that's funny if you get an audible laugh from me, it was funny and you surprised. You know what I mean? It, 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 you caught me off guard. I didn't see it coming. Because a lot of times I see jokes. Yeah. 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 I, that's, if you get an audible laugh from me, that's what happened. I'm just the opposite, man. I am, I, I don't, you don't have to be very funny at all. And I'll be fucking rolling. 
usually because I'm stoned when I go to comedy shows, and I love, I fucking love going to comedy shows almost as much as I love going to heavy metal shows. So I get to see all sorts of cool comedians, and they're just, I, I love laughing. So um, I'm the easiest person in the room to to uh, have in your audience. So if James and I are together, then you know they it, we're gonna balance each other out. So. Yeah. So, Nicole, you said that you couldn't pick just like one comedian today that you think is the best. You know, name a few of your the ones well, that you really enjoy. I honestly really like a female, like Tiffany Haddish. I actually really, really like her. I think she's fucking hilarious. Um, Sarah Silverman. I love Sarah Silverman. Um, I will admit something, and I'm going to admit it publicly. I don't like her anymore, but one of the reasons why I started watching a lot of. Uh, more comedy was Amy Schumer. Don't hit me. <laughs> she was like, hilarious. She was she really funny. Really first, yeah, like at first, yeah. Yeah, but it was like bad she was, rap. Yeah, she was hilarious up until she did her show, and her show was brilliant. And then after her show, she I think she kind of fell apart. But yeah. um, have you listened to Fortune Feimster at all? She's one Ooh. of the best comedians. Oh man, she's oh wait, 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 Fortune, yes, the yes, uh. Yes, the gay southern one. Oh, I yeah, love yeah. when she talks about her fucking family. Oh my god, when yeah. she talks about oh, she cuts. Uh, and she has the best Instagram too. So if you follow her Instagram, she does these like little. Every time she has ice cream, she like does a little ice cream dance. So it's I great. actually don't have an Instagram. I'm very kind of bad at social media. Well, you can follow her on Facebook. I know you're one of the old people now that uh, only has the Facebook. I feel like that. <laughs> you don't have the Discord server, or is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't even know what Discord is. I don't know either. My kid's on it all the time, but I have no idea what the fuck it is. He could, you know, be on the dark web. I thought it was like a messaging thing, because that's like, my son is dating a preacher's granddaughter uh, right now. So like, (laughs) they can only talk for like a half an hour at a time from certain hours. (laughs) And they do it on there. Interesting. So James, what are some of the comedians that uh, you're digging on right now? Um, so I like Ali Wang or Ali Wong. I think she's pretty funny. Um, she was great in Always Be My Maybe. If you haven't seen that on Netflix, it's fucking great. That was a great movie. Uh, I think a lot of good original comedies. Yeah, Netflix does do pretty good with original comedies. Um, I think that, uh, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm having a, a resurgence of, of appreciation for Pete Davidson for some reason and no reason at the same time. Like, he really annoyed me for a very long time. But, like, after the last year, I'm like, I see the value in you. You know what I mean? He's um, I really just a hand. My comedy comes more in structured, uh, scripted form in, in film and television. Really, I think... Uh, well-written comedies are hard. I think Seth Meyers is probably the funniest of the late night hosts, followed by James Corden, and neither of them get the attention that uh, other people should. I think Seth Meyers is another one who I uh, didn't think was so funny, and I've grown a, an appreciation for him over the past years. He does weird non sequiturs in his own thing. So I don't like Jimmy Fallon. The, my, one of my favorite lines in The Simpsons ever, ever was, kids, what are you laughing at? And don't say Jimmy Fallon or I'll know you're lying. And I'm like, yes, yes. So, um, yeah, I, I think I will say that, like, Netflix has given stand-up comedy a revival in a way that I don't think we would have gotten without streaming services. I think stand-up comedy, as far as like, it wasn't transitioning as well to DVD. It did fine in VHS. It did not transition as well as to DVD. Uh, HBO really stopped doing comedy as much as they used to. And I think Netflix has given it a resurgence. And I think oh, we're a lot of comedy that, comics out of it. Yeah. And I discovered comics that I like didn't know at all and was, like fell in love. Like, what is I always Beth Sterling Stelling? Mm. Like, she's fucking hilarious. And I, I saw her on one of those, uh, their comedy, I can't remember what it's called right now, but they had, there was a bunch of them that were like, I was like, I gotta look these people up because I had never heard of them before. Right. Right. Yeah, Netflix took what Comedy Central used to do mm-hmm. late at night, and uh, they really brought you into a comedy club, which is cool. I, I, I grew up where at midnight they would play on Saturday night, 
Saturday Night after Saturday Night Live, they would do oh, yeah. the they would do a comedy set. They would they would be in an actual mm-hmm. club and have up and coming comedians. And you had some great ones on there. I think it's the first place I ever saw Mitch Hedburn, who is. I realize that none of us the sky. Maybe yeah, I missed it I earlier. I was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, Mitch. Mitch is uh, another one of those people who really got we lost too soon and was super hilarious. I'm going to stop in here real quick. Uh, got a lot of people commenting tonight. Uh, our friend Dustin, you know, what's up, dude? He's uh, digging on some Jerry Seinfeld and Jeff Dunham. Uh, our buddy Rob Robert, uh, he's like in uh, Dave Chappelle, a lot of Dennis Leary, a lot of Dave Chappelle. My mom likes Tiffany Haddish and Aquafina. Uh, yeah, so a lot of love for Dave Chappelle in the commenters. Dave Chappelle is, yeah, I, so I, I, so I'm just showing my kids the uh, Chappelle show, and you would think, oh man, it's been about a decade. These are not going to play well in 2021, but they do. They carry over really, really well. He's been smart his entire career. And I, I kid you not, the best hands down recorded stand up, better than Eddie Murphy, raw, better than me. Dave Chappelle, Killing Me Softly out of DC, is by far, I think, the funniest stand up I have ever seen. I almost just start laughing as soon as I put it on. I know all the jokes. I know how he hits them on all the jokes. And it literally makes me audibly laugh out loud. And he's a different comedian now than before he went on his trip to Africa. Uh, One thing I want to point in here, uh, Eddie Murphy was asked about the story um, with Charlie Murphy on the Chappelle show. And Eddie Murphy confirmed everything that uh, his brother said. So all that shit about Prince being in uh, platforms and beating him at uh, basketball and stuff. Uh, all confirmed true. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just crazy. Norm Macdonald. Does he may like Norm Macdonald? He's pretty funny. I I I like that deadpan kind of humor. He's pretty funny. I I you know what I I like Norm Macdonald. I went back and watched Old Weekend Update, and it's really harsh. Like there are certain things that from the nineties that get pulled out that I look at that I'm like oh, I used to love Norm Macdonald on Weekend Update. Why did they fire him? And then I looked at it and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah that's why. Oh, this is all, all of this is bad in so many different ways, you know, and bad and not funny. That was the, that was the other part of it. It was like, <laughs> but Norm MacDonald himself, I, I, I agree, the deadpan humor, he's probably the best deadpan humorist, I think, out there at the moment. When Norm MacDonald gets up, you know, you, you got to buckle yourself in because you're going somewhere and you have no idea what it is. He's kind of has that Kaufman esque thing where he's like i'm just gonna do what i think is funny and hope that it works for everything else everybody else okay what do you guys think of bo burnham i think he's funny i think he's pretty funny i i love musical comedy i have a sucker for musical comedy so like i just i just love his whole vibe like he's just oh oh wait a minute bo burnham i was thinking of jeff dunham in my response of this was very different too very different i I don't don't either no yeah no, but Bro, Bro Burnham and uh, Dimitri Martin are very similar to where like they pull out the guitar, and I, I see a lot of their act in Santori in your delivery. Uh, I see a lot of their Santori. Look at look at the camera. We want to see your face. We don't want to see the side of your head. Are you rolling a joint? Oh, uh, so I, like, like I see that. a lot of that. Are you, you playing know, Scrabble? Playing the guitar. <laughs> I think he's what are you looking at, Santori? Are you rolling a joint? Are you playing Scrabble? No, nah, I'm just looking at the floor and my shoes. Just looking. You know the show is over here, right? It's not over there. Yeah, I don't. No, it's all good. I just don't that's a joke. I, 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 I brought Dave yeah, exactly. Gillis back. Right. All right. What now? What's going on? Dobie Gillis. Yeah. What about? Nothing. Think of mine. What? All right, Dave. Ask a good question because I, I took us on a horrible tangent. This is what happens when I don't host and I'm not prepared mentally. <laughs> uh, well, don't worry. I, I have been well prepared, sir. For I any know you have. You, as in like two of our five people not showing up until like later. And one of them not showing up at all. You know, I'm, I'm ready for all couple. situations here. Um, the God couple. I'm the Walter Matthau. That's very much a... Is that amazing, true? Is he the right one? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so how, how have you guys seen comedy change since you have started doing your your thing and like how has the pandemic changed the comedy game mm. can i go, no, how, how yeah, go first Nicole. <laughs> oh you can, go, you can go no 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 go ahead, You're good. Go ahead. Okay. 
I was just gonna say how how it's kind of changed over the like past five ten years. I mean, now it's just like comedy back when I was growing up. It was like there was no no one was offended by anything. <laughs> like there was some shit being said in the past, like that you cannot get away with today because you would probably offend somebody and it sucks. So I think that comedy has changed over the years, where comedians now. I've heard Seinfeld won't even perform at colleges because he knows that someone's going to complain about something he might have said that hurts someone's like feelings. Stupid. So that's how comedy has changed for me. Is like I think everyone's gotten too soft and got very offensive for no reason. And it's stupid. So I'm not gonna say about that. I've heard that from <laughs> comics. Old crouchy comics like you, Zandori. I've heard that a few own. different times. <laughs> what about you, Nicole? What do you think? What do you think? What, how has the pandemic treated you? And what do you think about what Santori just said? Well, so at first, I uh, I started like right before everything shut down again. Like I did it five years ago and then I bombed one night and stopped. And then I started up right when everything shut down. So I think the worst time to do it. But the thing that was really cool that I've noticed that came about is a lot of independent comedy producers and people wanting to put on shows. And like I did, I was one of those people, like I, I'm a nurse too. And um, I, so like I was working with COVID patients, but we got tested every week. So I was like, I'm getting tested every week. I'm gonna put on a mask and I'm gonna go out and like try to do this. And everyone was really safe about it too and respectful. People just wanted to laugh after so many months, mm, you know? Right. Uh, kind of things like because I remember thinking opened up it was still it's still hard like but it made it easier for a the comic starting up to get more stage time because a lot of the like in like the St. Louis comedy scene it was uh kind of a you know the older comics that have been around for a long time they stopped going out all in general and they're just now starting to do more mics and shows so yeah, it's given people the opportunity to produce. Like I actually started producing my own shows and it's it's been really fun. I realized I love that side of comedy too. And just like bringing like a great event about. Um, but I, about what my, I, I mean, I think that maybe, yes, people are easily offended right now, but I, I also think if it's, a joke. So I'm trying to figure out how the fuck I'm gonna say this. I'm a little stuck right now. <laughs> like, so if it's a good enough joke, you're it's gonna go over well. And if it's just not funny and just racist or just piece of shit, like I just <sighs> in some ways we are too sensitive. Like I don't want to hear somebody go on stage and like preach to me for half an hour about like rights because like I am like pro-trans, pro-gay, like everything, like, but right. like, just, you have to make it funny, and the same thing for the older comedy, like, I do like raunchy comedy, like, I still, like, I was watching Can't Hardly Wait the other night, and I was laughing at it, and I was just like, man, this did not hold up, <laughs> like, I was like, this time, but it was still fucking funny for that time, you also have to remember in that time period, things were fucking different. Right, rules were different, the acceptance. get a pass a little bit Appreciate more? Appreciate for what it is. I don't think comedians, I'm gonna, I'll pass up, but I don't think comedians get a pass anymore. I think comedians get, I think what Nicole said was exactly on point. If the joke is strong enough, the joke passes. But you've got to be strong enough. The, the thing that used to be, and this is what used to bother me about stand up comedy, and no offense, but like bonkers, particularly in Central Florida, Zandori, where we would go, you would get those comedians that, picked the very lowest hanging fruits of these sensitive subject jokes. They weren't funny then, but dumb people laughed at them. They've become less funny through the years that have gone by. But if you, listen, Blazing Saddles is hilarious. Blazing Saddles is still hilarious today. I just watched it, super offensive, but every single joke in that movie lands. Good jokes get the pass, and unfortunately, sometimes it goes down to your level of fame. I think so too. I think to a level, because if you're too famous, people will want to take you down, so they'll become uh, more offended. Or you could be too famous, and they could give you a pass. Dave Chappelle gets a pass a lot. 
like his first Netflix stand up. I don't remember what you, when, when he started doing stand up again for Netflix. When his first one, some of the things he said about transgenders, uh, so there were a lot of things that were tough, and not every one of those jokes landed. Now, his sub every stand up since and has rolled out a, a little better and everything. But I don't think these jokes landed in 1990. I think we were just, you know, more accepting of it. We're like, well, that's, we've used up all the comedy. These are the only jokes we have. And I think people right now are proving that there, there's a deeper tone of jokes. You know, I, I, like I said, I made an online cartoon in the late 90s, early 2000s that I watched the other day that my kids and my family have seen a thousand different times. And we all went, ooh, he. I mean, it, it's funny. That's still funny, but ooh, you know. And I think if somebody really enjoyed it, I'd have to explain it. Well, I don't think this. It's a stereotype, which I played up on, you know. Yeah. Low hanging fruit. And I grab from the low hanging fruit sometimes in my comedy. And that's the part I don't like seeing 20 years later. You're like, ooh. That was super easy. It's the James Gunn thing. James Gunn made a horrible joke, low hanging fruit, and he got a lot of trouble for it. And you know, so no, that's true. And like, I feel like for me, I like I said, I love raunchy comedy and things like that. But they're also like, like if it's not, if it's just offensive, like I love right. things like I love abortion jokes. I fucking do, but they have to be clever, you know. Right. Like I just, I just don't want like, yo, I got like five abortions. <laughs> like, like you gotta be like, I. It, yeah, and I learned that from experience. Like I once took a mic at a, uh, it was a counter rally for like a pro-choice rally for a counter, like for the pro-life. And I took that mic and I was trying to be like supportive. This is before I even started doing stand up. And I was like, but like, and I'll like, I was literally like this. I'm gonna so like, I have two kids and, or I have a kid at the time. And I was like, I like, I love them and stuff, and I'm, I'm glad I had them, but I'm glad it was my choice. And I was like, I mean, they could have been medical waste, and everyone stops. And oh, like, it's a know your audience crowd play. Of no one wanted to like, right. like, they were just like, no, like, we're not doing this today, man. But I felt so ashamed, and I walked away. I was like, it was not that, like, I just didn't know what to say at the time. I was right. just Again, you can tell when it just landed. You know what I mean? If you would have got a chuckle, you're like, I could work with a chuckle, but it's it's starting to fire and with Tinder, and you're like, oh, I got no spark here. I'm not dealing with any spark on this one. That sucks. That's that's yeah. But yeah you, you put yourself outgoing, out there. I, that's there's a lot to be said for doing that. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And being outgoing, being the kind of person that's not afraid to walk up to a, in, in, in a large group of people and say something unscripted, sometimes. That's what happens, you know what I mean? You're like, you're like, damn, that you don't understand. As I was going in my head, it sounded much funnier than that came out. You know what I mean? And oh yeah, are you saying that? Right, right, right. I see the problem. What I just said there. Why did I figure that out seven seconds ago? You know. Are you a fan of Anthony Jeselnik's comedy? Then, if you like that, like pretty offensive, but not like overtly offensive humor. I have never really who I never heard that person actually. He's he's he and John Mulaney are the two funniest comics I've ever seen. But if you have not seen Anthony Jeselnik stuff, he's offensive but fucking hilarious. But, yeah. And he's offensive. He's and if you like that kind of thing. But you go in I think that's one thing about comedians is like Anthony Jeselnik is offensive. Um God, so, I can't remember. Sarah Silverman is going to tell some off-color jokes. You know, going into those shows, that yeah. that's going to happen. So you are prepared for that kind of stuff. But when it gets out of that little pod of people, that's when people start to get in trouble. Yeah, um, yeah, true. But I, but I would argue, I like that that first name spell, and I, it was it was specifically trans. I don't remember exactly what it was, but. Some of his transgender jokes on that first one with race and rape on the first of his comeback specials. I knew what I was getting myself into. And I'm telling you, if he would have made that joke in the 1990s, it would have killed and I would have laughed at it. Uh, it was a joke that was good enough for then and it's not necessarily good enough for now. 
it, because it's not it, it's it's finding that space that you can do it in and there's a lot of different uh avenues that i think dave Chappelle can speak on transgender issues are not one of them you know what i mean so it's i yeah but but you're right it's the spreading out it's the fact that we know every comics jokes because we can get it at any time on our phones and everything these are not playing for the audience you do play for different audiences uh, you know when santori and i were skippers it, you knew who got on your boat you knew in the first two jokes that you told them do i have to follow the spiel or can i go completely and I'll do skip. my own thing and make these people laugh you know uh it's so you know, weird to me sorry, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I ramble, so feel free. Dave knows this. Feel free to oh, I, I, cut me I, off. It's so weird how, like, in the last, like, technology has changed comedy. And um, I, I will say, I don't know if you guys, have you guys ever seen The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Have you watched that show on Prime? I've watched a few episodes. It's our first episode. My wife loves it. it. No, it is the most, like, honestly, like, it was, like, that girl power shit. I was just, like, yes, look at this bitch go. But, like, the actress that plays it so well. And they, like, but seeing how comedy was done back then, because, you know, it's a period right. of comedy. So it's, like, clubs where, like, hardly anyone knew, like, I mean, these people didn't know that her husband was taking somebody else's jokes because they didn't have, unless you were in that city, in that, you know, in that place like they didn't have a way and they just started kind of recording comedy and stuff like that and people were getting the records and then that's how you slowly and so to me it just it's cool watching that and then <coughs> how far we come with technology and stuff and how comedy is so easy and easily accessible well and, and comedy seems to what do you guys think of tiktok because what it how comedy changes uh my wife watches tiktok she loves tiktok <laughs> but they have some they have some uh you know people who do characters on there and everything it is definitely a form to relate comedy uh for another generation of comedians uh, that doesn't mean that i think every i don't want to see like martin short doing a tiktok you know what i mean but people who who grew up on the tiktok i i think they can make some pretty funny content so. i think what's changed comedy more than anything is youtube i because yeah. you have comedian comedians putting shit up there, and then you have kids like Danny Gonzalez. My kid loves fucking Danny Gonzalez, and his shit's really funny. And he's just so he's just a guy who was a comedian, and he had put a platform on YouTube, and now has like millions of subscribers, and people love it. So you can, you know, grow your base through YouTube. You don't necessarily need to do the stand up gig. You don't necessarily need to do records and albums and specials yeah. and shit. You can just get up on YouTube and your shit out that way and you can probably grow your audience faster through youtube than through anything else yeah that's a good point i mean you would think i think it's different kinds of fame still there are youtube famous people that i don't know their names you know what i mean like uh logan paul paul Lo yeah logan paul i guess is somebody who's about to fight another a boxer he's a famous youtube thing i i think the one thing about youtube comedians is that my kids watch different youtube comedians and i can't name them and that maybe that's because of the conventional way that I've intaked. Even the TikTok people that my wife shows me all the time. I don't know. I could not tell you who you should go to to mm. see a reference of what I'm doing now. But I can quote comedians from the 90s, from today, from that still go that conventional way of television, bar, stand up, that whole nine. Yeah. It's traditional comedy it'll never go away it'll just adapt and but you're going to have different levels and as technology changes you're going to have different kinds of outlets to be creative and the most successful ones are the ones that can like really adapt to all the different platforms that are available to them your hair still looks beautiful james i love I, how you're doing the first charming keeps, flow yeah it keeps <laughs> it keeps coming out if that's what happens it's, because it's slowly it's, watching it dry and get like poofier right. as it dries Right. Like for two hours, it would be out, man. <laughs> he has the most amazing fro, Nicole. You have no idea. If you stick around long enough, you'll see how amazing his fro really is. We'll do a time lapse of this episode specifically from when I come in with slick back short hair to where it is right now. So, 
right. Well, I think we're kind of wrapping up here. I'm going to go around the horn and uh, I, I want you to give me one or two comedians that are, that we haven't talked about yet and that uh, you think is really funny that we haven't talked about. So uh, James. Damn it. I was afraid you were going to start with me. I gave you, I blew my comedian load already. I wasn't prepared for anyone else. Who haven't you talked about yet? Um, yeah, I don't know. I have nothing. I'm totally not prepared for that. I did. I gave you all my best comedians. There's so many comedians out there that we didn't touch on. What about you, Santori? I would have to say Stephen Wright and Chief and John. Oh, man. Mm. Coming out strong, Santori. Made up for James's lack of any answer whatsoever. Ricky Gervais! There you go. Yeah, Ricky Gervais <laughs> is good. There's somebody. How about you, Nicole? See, it's not easy, Dave. I'm not even prepared. <laughs> I'm I, I just, this is why we have the test at the end of the show. We want to see how stoned you got over the course of the show. And then we end it with a test. I did get a little stoned. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. No, I'm trying to, I am trying to think right now. Um, I have another one. Just to help out. Yeah. Here's the other one. Not working. <laughs> Gilda Radner. There you go. Gilda Radner. Um, oh, Bob, Steve Martin. What do you think of Bob Saget? I think Bob Saget's very funny. I think he's I real think funny. So. And I didn't realize that he was pretty dirty. <laughs> I didn't yep, realize that because I watched him. I grew up with Full House. Like pretty much everybody who grew up in the 80s. And then it's like, oh, this is. When dude. I saw his stand up, I was just like, holy shit. It's just such a character shift. And right. like, it was really cool to see. <laughs> I don't know if I was Bob Saget if I would recommend at least to, to Sam Tory's point to a to a bit. I don't know if I was Bob Saget if I would recommend going out and doing stand up just right now because of you know just just because he's gonna be funny. But Bob Saget is one of those people that will just oh man, you were seven, you were you were this close. You did twelve minutes. How'd you do twelve minutes and not say that really bad joke? That you knew, do you guys all have like that joke in the back? Oh yeah. Does it change? Does the audience reaction change where you dictate where you're gonna go? Like you're like, okay, I'm flowing like this, I'm flowing like this, I'm flowing like this, and and they're going here, and you're like, you know, I've been holding on to this joke. Oh yeah. And this <laughs> is the audience to play it for. Yeah. Nice. See, I get the mind of a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I'm just super lazy. I would be as prepared for stand up comedy as I am for these shows. <laughs> absolutely not at all. You'd be yeah. a, a very Andy Kaufman esque type of comedian. You just get on there and you're just like, stand there, like, uh, I don't know. That's my time, everybody. Thank you. Right, right. I, I really I need to know what kind of audience I was playing for. Like, I could have just do a bar. You need to send me to a specific group, you know, like, like church camp. Uh, I know what I'm going to play for at a church camp audience or Alcoholics Anonymous. Tell uh, just a group, a clan meeting. I know what kind of jokes to tell <laughs> things like that. Just give me a group of people that all have similar thoughts and I, I can do it. I can wing it. But you give me a broad audience of people. Yeah, you don't know. You really have. <laughs> right. All right. We got a bunch of folks uh, commenting. They're coming in fast and furious now. Uh, comedians oh, yeah. that we haven't talked about, uh, Kevin Nealon, uh, my, uh, my mom was saying Kevin Nealon, we have Dan Aykroyd, Dana Carvey, but I'm going to give you two names that we haven't, that haven't brought up and you're going to be like, oh yeah, no shit. Uh, <laughs> Richard Pryor, who Richard is Pryor. So, so fucking brilliant, and Robin Williams. I mean, Robin Williams, god damn it. Two fucking genius, damn it. genius level comedians that, you know, you see their influence in the comedians really. today, you still see their oh, shit, so... Yeah. Um, and that's a great thing about YouTube is you can fucking go back and watch all these things from Richard Pryor, George Carlin, Sam Kinison, Robin Williams. We have it all at our disposal now, so we're pretty lucky in that regard. Um, so this is usually we do this part at the front of the show, but because we just want to go straight from the sets into uh, talking about comedy, uh, we're going to put this little nugget at the end of the show. Um, Nicole, this is where we go around the horn talking about stuff we've been watching on TV, uh, movies we've watched, any shows that we watch on streaming. Um, so I'm gonna start with you. What have you been watching? Okay, um, 
I'm unemployed, so I've been watching a lot of Law and Order SVU reruns. <laughs> of which there are a lot. <laughs> Um, but The Handmaid's Tale is back on. So, like, I don't watch too much TV um, right now. I don't know. I've been reading a lot more, trying to. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know why I love the SVU so damn much, though. It's like, fuck the police, but, like, accept the dedicated detectives <laughs> at the Special Victims Unit. Like, they're fucking awesome. Yeah, Law is that the one Ice Q or Ice is Ice T? Yeah, it's Ice T. Is that the Ice T one? Ice T. Yeah. That's the great thing about Law and Order is it's always on, and if there's nothing else to watch, you can't just watch any section, especially SVU. But okay. it's always it's always on somewhere on one of the channels. Oh, yeah. And there's so many of them; they're hardly ever rerun. Like one that you've seen before. Usually, it's like oh, I haven't seen this one before. Yeah, they got like 700 episodes or something. <laughs> What about you, Santori? What are you watching? There's a bunch of reruns on whatever comes on the TV, like The Office, South Park. Um, nothing, no movies or nothing. Oh, did I tell you? Wait, I did get my DVDs. Um, <laughs> number one day bought me uh, The Wildlife, so I did watch that. How was it? Yeah. Was it as good as you remembered? Yeah, well, yeah, it's a great movie. I was very happy and very pleased, so I do have it. Good. I'm glad you got it. And I recommend it. If you're looking for a movie to watch, it's really fun. It has Eddie Van Halen orchestrating the music. Yeah, but you have to yeah, jump through a lot of hoops in order to get it. So it's not like, hey, you should check this well, movie out. And it's like, no, you have to do steps in order to get this movie that nobody has heard of. <laughs> it's really that. Yeah, it's crazy. If you want to go through the hoops, if you have a DVD player, order it. They have it on Amazon. What about you, James? What are you watching, bro? Uh, man. I don't know, man. I watch a lot of YouTube. I saw the Snyder Cut. It was it was a longer version of an already in yeah, movie. So, um, oh, I saw Mortal Kombat. Yeah, that was good. It was it was not good in the like King Kong was, Godzilla. Like it. Good. Yeah, it was fun. It was. was you know, funny. I, <laughs> I think the more Mortal Kombat was way more Last Dragon than they expected it to be you know bruce leroy catches bullets with his teeth i think i'm like it's gonna come down to a glow at the end of this dumb shit and it was i mean kano was kano was brilliant like i i literally right before i went you know when you saw uh sonia and Jax, and i'm like man i hope that they bring kano in uh but there's no way he's going to be, and i hope he's just as ornery as in the original movie, and just as good. And not only was he, but he was be- He was better than the original movie. And I would say that I think his character alone was my favorite part of that movie. He he owned every single scene he was in. He was hilarious. The fights. Mortal Kombat's a hard story to tell. We've proven it now through three movies. It doesn't create a good flow you know because at some point in the story you have to break off into 17 individual fights in weird places for no reason and as a writer who it's hard to get there that's fair and they just go magic now you're there my son just got upstairs he's been so good this entire time he's awesome Tell him we said hi. Tell him hello from the folks at the Mile High podcast. Uh, so He's waving in the background. <laughs> Tell him we heard about the story of his alone time in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't know about that. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, so this is where I take over the show because I always watch a lot of shit. And uh, I just got the Moderna 2 shot yesterday and I've been in bed all day long because I've been fucking exhausted with a headache all day long. So I've been watching a lot of shit. Uh, what I've been watching is Servant, is this really spooky show on Apple Plus, uh, created by M Night Shyamalan. Um, it's it's impossible for me to describe this show to you, but it's a really good show. Uh, also on Apple Plus, uh, for all mankind, it's a it's a show of uh, kind of theorizing what if Russia were to made it were to have made it to the moon before America and how the world would be different if that oh, would I, saw that trailer. I know i know of that trailer yeah it's a really good show 
Um, but surprisingly, the two best shows that I've been watching over the last course of the last week is two docu- two animal documentaries on Netflix. One is called Life in Color, where it's just it's like blue. It's like the planet Earth shows only. It's about like colorful things, like the colors of the Earth. But Night on Earth uh, on Netflix is really cool. They take like the most advanced like night captured technology and then they go into like the savannas of africa they go underwater and just see how different the light the world is when it's dark outside uh, it's brilliant it's really cool so those are my two recommendations and james i'm gonna let you take over for the rest. i'm watching them too on uh, amazon prime it's all right oh so okay. also, invincible if you guys haven't seen invincible on amazon fucking best uh, superhero tv show that came out this year and by far what about yeah. that other one that Kate was on Amazon? What is it called? Um, the Boys. The Boys, yes, that's really good. It, yeah. is, it was really good. Um, I've only got through first season. I like the second season pretty good, but if you like The Boys, then you'll really like Invincible. I mean, it there is, it's just it's a father and son bonding story, but there it just it's a super violent, um, bloody, gory animated cartoon show created by robert kirkman who created the walking dead best fucking uh show on uh amazon or uh, superhero show for sure all right james take it away my friend why don't you go ahead and take us home all right so uh real quick one thing i need to uh announce is that i am going to be taking a hiatus from co-hosting this with dave which means you can see dave and probably a string of different co-hosts going through um those of you know what's going on my family has some uh there's just my my dad's not doing well and so i've been splitting time uh and so i just can't right at the moment give as much attention to the show as i'd like to i will still be behind the scenes talking to dave and santori and everybody at the uh trucking pacific crew but uh i'm just i had to step back for a minute uh that is my big announcement i'm assuming that's what you meant by taking it over and closing yes. out the show basically yes I, and, okay uh, i'll be uh, co-hosting with either santori or dr detroit so oh there you uh, go i'll be my my rotating go- co-host very nice very nice um well and then so what does that mean what does it next week look like for you dave so next week because jeff we couldn't get jeff on we're gonna do uh kind of like a follow-up to this week because i know jeff has some uh, comedians that he wanted to talk about. Dr. Detroit's real passionate about comedy. So we're going to do a quick hits next Friday. Um, just we're going to catch up with those guys and hopefully we can see Jeff's set that uh, unfortunately we couldn't see tonight. Uh, but you know, that's what we're doing next week. We got a, a week off coming up. I'm so excited for that week off. You have no idea. And that's the same weekend that like uh, I think I can't remember. There's like some movie coming out that week that I'm real excited to go see, which is not very helpful. But I'll, I'll remember. I'm just very high right now. All right. Uh, Nicole, you have anything, uh, any like something to promote, any kind of shout out to make that we should look? Um, just um, if you are around Denver, send me a DM. Maybe we can meet up and smoke. I'll be there from the 14th to the 16th. Um, and if you like anything I said, um, add me on social media, Nicole Gorey. Um, I post some sick ass memes. Nice. Nice and great pictures of her, her kittens. They're, if you haven't seen her kittens, they're amazing. Memes and kittens. Hey, I totally appreciate that. I got a shit ton of kittens. Santori, what do you have to promote for us? Um, for oh, no. Sorry, there was a cat kitten. Sorry. Uh, just before I promote anything, that's my sister. <laughs> my heart, my prayers go out to you and your family. So. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the only thing I got from over is uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, Santori, what now? Um, eight thirty. Uh, I guess time zone. Yeah, time zone. Um, nine o'clock my time, which is uh, Mountain Wizard Central time, and then like eight thirty Eastern uh, uh, Mountain time, and then ten thirty Eastern time. See what One day. <laughs> So the show is on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time at 9 o'clock Central Daylight Time and 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Don't worry, man. I got your back. I'm telling you, one of these days, I am going to have the time that I'm going to sit down and I'm going to edit 
you explaining time zones. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? Every it's one of the episodes. And just put it in like one streaming loop. That will be, that that's would be hilarious. I actually that'll make us TikTok for me. Yeah. You know, that would be it. That would be the one. Dave, you have something else to promote that is not directly related to Trucking Missouri yes. or my Thank life podcast. Thank you so much for asking. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm, um, of course, promoting my book, Caldera, uh, available now on Amazon, in uh, paperback, as well as uh, on your Kindle, on your Nook. Uh, any, you know, it, the Audible book just came out. Uh, Race Through Space Event Horizon 2 just came out on Audible, and that's really fucking cool. Um, so go to Amazon and please buy my stuff. Thank you. Excellent. That was a good promotion. Well, you know what? Thank you guys so much, Dave. Thanks for bailing out in the very beginning when I was not here because I was stuck in traffic. Santori, always good to see you. Nicole, it was a pleasure having you on the show. We have a lot of different shows. We would be more than happy to have you back at any time on any of our shows. Um, I hope everybody goes and checks out those sick-ass memes and comes and blazes you up when you were in Denver. Um, if you guys want to go It's been fun. There you go. Well, thanks so much. I really appreciate you coming on, dude. Um, if you guys want to get a hold of us, you can get a hold of us at www.truckypacific.com. That has links to things somewhere else, but it's our page. Uh, you can contact us at the Mile High Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, if you would like to give us money, because sometimes people like to do that, we work hard on this show. We do it all for free because. That's just how it is. Some money would help. It would expand out what we're doing. You can Vimbo us at Truckee Pacific 303. Uh, we're on a bunch of different things. So like, subscribe, follow, whatever the hell. Hit that subscribe. Turn the note, hit the bell. Do the subscribe. All thing. the things. The do bell. all the things you know you're supposed to do. And of course, a shout out to our season sponsors, Paul and Betsy Hawkins who every time you have a new guest, they welcome into their family. That family is just growing larger and larger by the minute. But with that My said, inheritance is going shorter and shorter with every person we bring into the family. Right. right. I hope that inheritance works in seniority because I've known you since I was like six. So um, it's been a pleasure, guys. I will be back. This is not the last time you'll see my face. Uh, but for me, I'm signing out. And for everybody at the Mile High Podcast, uh, have a good Friday. Thank you. Have a good night, guys. Good night. Bye. Bye. This has been a Truckee Pacific production. For sponsorship inquiries and comments, go to the Mile High Podcast at gmail.com. Uh,